Hey, this is David at Chicago Music Exchange with uh, Juna. I said it right? Yes. Okay. Yes, you did. Introduce yourselves, <laughs> Juna. Um, I'm Donna Diane. And I'm Jared Carnes. Awesome. You guys are great. Thank you. That was loud. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, how long have you been a band? Um, I've been doing Juna since 2018, and then um, Jared joined up with me. Oh my God, it hasn't even been a year yet, yeah. Whoa, wait, November of, of 2021? Yeah. So you were just playing solo by yourself? No, I had a different drummer. Okay. He moved, um, Jared like came in like literally like three months. Yeah, basically to learn the new album and record it. A bit, bas- basically <laughs> to learn the new album and record it. Um, and you know that was the original idea and we, we already had a recording day of like three months later. So we're like, all right, we gotta like really just hammer out these ten songs and just get it ready to go. So then we recorded it and immediately started playing live. Yeah, so, yeah, and actually all the songs we're playing are um, off that new okay. album. So we're do- we're doing a little weird. We're playing all of our new songs before we re- we release them. <laughs> no, that's cool. You are very detailed. <laughs> Am I right that's about one, that? That's one way to say it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you got a lot going on. I got to so. be coordinated. It is what I. I yeah. guess I would say. <laughs> well, you're coordinated, but so so this this project started as your project, right? So how did you get the vision for Juna as a band, but yeah. your musical expression? I mean, it did start as a solo project because I, so my former band, Beach Run Jewel, was like kind of on the outs. It was like, you know, when you know a band's about to break up, uh-huh. like, and so... Um, bass played a very prominent role in that band, so I wanted to have a way that I could still play my songs live without sacrificing the bass. So that's how I decided to develop like the whole bass rig, so that I could just keep playing solo. And then it worked out so well that I was like, oh, maybe I'll just get a drummer involved and do it two piece and it's like a running joke that everybody in this band like generally hates two pieces because there's no bass or like not enough bass <laughs> but like we found a way around it yeah. so there's a lot of bass there's there's yeah. <laughs> there's plenty of bass going on it's, it's fantastic i love it do you ever feel the need to uh not the need but like to, to add another another player oh my gosh i joke all the time that like I people DM me pictures of their bass rigs. <laughs> yes, everybody who like wants to play bass, but it's so funny because it's yeah. just like I don't know. Now that I've evolved it and I'm doing it, I think I would miss it if yeah, I. Didn't. I don't mean as a bass player. No, do not bring out a bass oh. player. No, you you stay the bass player. I mean like a hell. You don't need to do anything. You got it. Interview's done. She's it's, it's over. It's, we've we've got it all. It's no, so, but I have thought about like you know another a, a keyboard player, a, another whatever. Yeah, I mean it's it's like this tricky thing because like on the new record, there's definitely some layering of guitars. Like I just I definitely multi-tracked stuff, and it was this was it was a different thing because now then I had to kind of reverse engineer it for doing live. Mm. When the original premise is like, how can we do a two piece but make it sound like a full rock trio? Make it sound huge, yeah, yeah. And all like, there's no loops, no everything has to be completely analog, like no mm-hmm. no like pre recorded anything.
like I feel like you have reinvented tap dancing. Yeah. I think like guitar <laughs> players have this pedal thing with this is a whole different level. So let's talk about it since we're talking. About yeah. It. Um, <laughs> what the hell is this? How does it work? What is every song programmed? What's going on? So everything's done live. Um, this the Roland PK5 is a, essentially just a MIDI controller. It's like a very elaborate MIDI controller that controls the um, Moog Minotaur, which is the actual brains of the bass synthesizer. This is meant to recreate a Moog Taurus. I've heard that the brains of the Minotaur are basically the same as like the Taurus 3. Um, so basically it's just the affordable way yeah. <laughs> to create a Moog Taurus. And um, so that's that's the basic part of the operation. And then I've just added different things to it, like um, this MIDI switcher at the top, which allows me to toggle basically the voice of the bass synth that I'm using. So you can pre-program um, those. And then um, I have like this pedal over here, which is a basically a on-off sustain pedal that I've built for it. I think Electro Harmonics has since created one, but I could not find anybody who built them. So I literally had to learn to build pedals to create the Okay, we're gonna get pedal. into that too. See, this is what I was talking about. There's so much to go into. You have, what you may not know interwebs, or maybe you do, because I did see your premiere uh, guitar, your rig rundown. Oh, okay, oh yeah, yeah. I feel like I cheated a little okay. bit. I was like, don't watch it, don't watch it. But I did discover that you have built, you built a switcher. Right? Did you build a switcher? This I had m made for me. A guy in the UK, the Bright Onion Pedals thing, mm -hmm. um, he made that effects looper for me. That is way beyond my capability. So the sustain thing is the only thing I've like designed and built. But. Got it. So <laughs> how, did you have a schematic for this or you just... No. You willed I, it to happen? I, like, I don't know how this is going to work. I let's did. Do it. I, so the impetus for that is like normally what you're supposed to use is, is an expression pedal, which you do not stomp on. You rock delicately and I don't do delicately rocking <laughs> anything so I broke so many expression pedals and that's why I had to like make I was like somebody just needs to make an on off foot switch for the sustain and that's how that was born now I've like complicated it there's both a momentary switch and a like latching switch on it just to give me like added versatility so it's like so, it, so you're freezing moments is that kind of your freezing? Basically, yeah, the bass. Uh, so like um, during some of like the heavy parts where you'll hear the bass cut, like when I'm not stepping on it, yeah, that's yeah. setting the sustain to like zero, basically the filter Almost like on a gate? the- gate? Yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. a filter on the Moog. Gotcha. That I'm basically taking all the way to zero mm. and then I quickly step on it and then it has like the more extended tone. So then that way when I'm um, passing to different keys, it's getting like a nice legato feel. Just just like you would on like a regular piano when you're pressing, holding the sustain pedal down. Okay. So. How are shows? What What's going on with shows? Are you, when was your last show? What's your upcoming show? How are people receiving you? They, I know they love you. That's how they're receiving you. Shows have been really fun. I always joke like, it's so fun going to a Juno show when people for the first time because they do not know anything about the bass synth. So you kind of like, see people's faces like over the course of the set where they're kind of like what is she, why is she standing on one foot and then they look and then they're like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and it finally like sinks in what i'm doing so that's always fun about a live show yeah i mean we've been yeah. just playing like uh like local and regional and kind of this alternating fashion where like we'll do a local show one month and then and then like two weeks later we'll do like either milwaukee or minneapolis or like like we're doing kenosha coming up and in uh in less than two weeks and um and trying to like hop on uh support like for for when bands come through chicago um and then um we're trying to kind of expand that to doing like some like regional mini tours and stuff like that coming up in the in the next six months through through the next year awesome so you're about playing twice a month kind of yeah Ish. pretty much yeah it really depends on like who's asking us to play like we've been very lucky that like we're not like a you know obvious like metal band or anything but we, it's been really nice that like the metal community has been very embracing of us we've gotten to open we opened for cave -In over the summer which was such a good pairing because it's just like they're a band that is metal but they're also so many other things at the same time and i think that's like kind of how we strive to me many things <laughs> all at once yeah. so
So, okay, let's get to the guitar. It's been sitting here, this God City uh, guitar. Uh, I, again, mad respect, just a bridge. That's all you need. Yes. I. I it's like neck pickups are so pointless <laughs> to me. I never I agree use 100%, them. but that's because I don't know how to play guitar. <laughs> I mean, I, I do. Know, I'm I sure. just don't play guitar like you play guitar. <laughs> I'm sure, like, I, somebody will give me a guitar that will completely change my mind about neck pickups. But traditionally, yeah, I, in my old band, I used to play with such a loud bass player that it was just like I would just do anything to cut through. So I was always on the brightest setting, bridge pickup. And then it's just like, that's I love loud, screamy, nasty sounding guitars. So that's kind of what and th this guitar is wonderful because it's like it has a t so my other guitar is um sg junior a 67 sg junior with like a, just a p90 in the bridge love that guitar but the problem is it's not super versatile it sounds so nasty and good driven but like clean it sounds this guitar is so versatile to me and I can get like a really nice, thick, like clean palm mute in those parts, but it is also equally like screechy and singy in the high end when I click on the distortion. So I like that it's like a humbucker with like a lot of character in it. Cause usually I like single coils. Yeah. I mean, well, we just started carrying these and they're, they're all fit and finished playability. They just feel great. Um, and it, yeah, definitely having that pickup. It, it, being able to carry, I mean, cause again, you're doing a lot of heavy lifting, carrying the melody yeah. and all, and the lead and <laughs> the bass and the cabinets up the stairs. Um, so man, let's go lightning round. Should we go lightning round? Uh oh, should we do it? <laughs> this goes all right. All right. <clears throat> nope. Here we go. Uh, and just go fast. Just oh, hand it off no. microphone. Here we go. Okay. Your favorite show to binge is judge Judy. So is it really judge Judy? <laughs> Lately, yes. Pluto. Do you only get the CW or something? It's on Pluto. It's on the streaming. They do like all the 90s shows. On Pluto? The yeah. channel Pluto? I've never I even know, heard. I don't know. It's a streaming service called Pluto. What's and it, the internet? It works the exact same way as if you're in like a, a hotel. If you're at like a hotel TV, you have like your guide thing and you're just flipping through it and you use your Apple remote as if it's like a, like a TV remote. Wait, I have one of those Hisense TVs, and there's a Pluto button on it. That's it. That's it. Dude. You can watch all your 90s shows. Judge Judy, Beavis and Butthead, Daria. Oh. Uh, it's all on there. Your favorite musician is? Oh, my God. I don't even know what I would answer. You're going to, tonight, Jared. you're going to be laying in bed. You're going to be like, oh, damn. It was. It could only. I can't do it. <laughs> Lightning yeah. Round has no mercy. So I said Jared. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll just say. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you made it. All right. Your favorite venue to play is? Oh, uh, I'm really enjoying, I really enjoyed when we played at Sleeping Village, but the empty bottle will always have my heart. Chicago is the best because? Summer in Chicago is the best. Amen. Winter that's, that's is the true. worst. Fall time, in <clears throat> fall time in Chicago also. Yeah, you ask me in the summer, and I love Chicago. Ask me in the winter. I fucking hate this place. Yeah. January. <laughs> January. Winter is coming. Cinnabons with raisins are? That's a thing? Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's fine. They're just my feelings. <laughs> All right. Sorry All right. I trampled so, on them. <laughs> All right. What talent <laughs> would you like to possess if you weren't already talented at music? I wish I wish I knew more about NFTs. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just joking. I know. <laughs> What's your favorite musical guilty pleasure that you're willing to tell the internet right I'm now? I'm not ashamed of anything I listen to. Damn right. Maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know. It's got to be maybe like one of the songs that plays like over the the grocery store speaker and like one of the one of the visits I do for work. Um, but I don't know exactly what it is you probably hear a lot of that. i hear so much just like grocery store core as i call it um <laughs> grocery store chords <gasps> can we do this band yes <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a grocery store core band so oh sad. i remember they the one that got stuck in my head when i was working the other day was um this is a story of a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole world 
Ba 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 ba. Absolutely love her. Which yeah. is also my favorite Juno song. So I don't know who. I don't know who <laughs> what the fuck? I, d- I kind of vaguely remember it being a hit when I was in high school, but I don't know who does it or anything. But yeah, that's that's probably the one that's going to. Yeah, that's the one right now. Mad respect. I love you guys. <laughs>